Okay, so there's this riff, we all know it, we all love it. And I think it's one of the most iconic and recognizable riffs out there for a handful of reasons, which I'll get to soon. But there is something happening in it that I never really realized and I've been playing it wrong forever. And although it makes all the difference, you can't really hear it clearly unless you slow it down. So of course I'm talking about the legendary recording that dates back all the way to 2006 when the song Pump It by the Black Eyed Peas stormed the chart. <clears throat> Excuse me? I mean the legendary recording by Dick Dale in 1962? Mm -hmm. That's the one. Whew. Anyway, it uses a scale we don't call major. We don't call harmonic major, no, we call it double harmonic major. And that is the first reason why this riff sounds so recognizable and iconic. Double harmonic because there's two odd notes found in the scale. So even if you're not into music theory, everyone will hear what it does to the sound of a scale. So we take a regular major scale, the building block of almost all of Western music, and it sounds like this. Right, we all know that. So now we lower the sixth note I'm playing by one semitone to a flat six. And this creates a typical augmented second interval from flat six to seven. And it sounds like this. That already sounds kind of spicy, right? But we're not there yet. This is the harmonic major scale I just played, but we need the double harmonic. So we do it again, but now on the second scale degree. So we lower the two to a flat two, creating another augmented second interval between the flat two and the major third. And it sounds like this. That is almost a riff already, right? <laughs> so I guess to many Western ears, the scale sounds a little bit like Middle Eastern or Oriental. And that is also where the origins of this song lie, actually. So although Dick Dill popularized the melody in Western culture, long before him, the melody already existed in the Middle East as a folk song. So it shouldn't come as a surprise to find out that Dill uh, who has his roots in Lebanon, by the way, watched and learned a lot from his uncle playing the Arabic oud. So that perfectly explains how that melody found its way to the west coast of the United States, where Dill merged the two worlds into what would become the anthem of surf culture. But apart from the scale used, one thing that's definitely defining the sound of an entire genre is the sound Dick Dill used. And we can turn this into an endless gear snobbery video, which is a lot of fun, but honestly, everyone can get pretty close with some kind of strat. And now flick that pickup selector to the bridge position. Smack some, no, quite a lot of reverb on there. And lastly, crank the amp to the edge of breakup. So the third iconic element of this riff has to do with the picking technique you just saw me use. So it's based around something we call tremolo picking. In short, it just means a fast and constant down and up picking pattern. And in this piece, it comes down to playing 16th notes, which means four notes in one beat. 1E and the 2E and the 3E, etc. But in this riff, it isn't always down, up, down, up. There is some rhythmic patterns going on. Listen to this. Pretty difficult to hear clearly, right? Let's slow it down. That's pretty clearly this. Dale's sense of rhythm is unparalleled and it's a big part of his sound and his style, which isn't surprising since that same uncle he saw playing the oud taught him to play the tarabaki, an Egyptian percussion instrument. So that's where it comes from when Dale describes his picking hand as playing the drums on a guitar. I do that. You can hear the pulse on the one. So I'm playing drums on the guitar. So you can hear the pulse on the one. He accentuates all the beats. And it's subtle, but it makes all the difference. That's kind of nice, but we need to bump it up to 172. Woo! 
So that is awesome. So the trick to getting this right is to keep the arm and the wrist relaxed and pick the strings relatively close to the bridge. That also determines a lot of the sound, by the way. It makes it snappy. So Dick also get the movements from his arm and keeping his wrist fairly, like not locked in, still relaxed, but still pretty solid, like this. <laughs> Anyway, just look at him playing it, it's, it's different then. Now to the main part of the riff, which is basically just the double harmonic major scale, played in an ascending order. And just before we hit the octave, we descend again back to the B. One thing you cannot miss though is that open E string just before we hit that B. Combined with the tremolo picking, it sounds like this. Also, the slides are essential to give it the right vibe. So if you're unsure, just play the whole thing with one finger and you're sort of forced to do it. So now let's bring it up to speed and maybe you can clap along with me like this. So then we get this. So note that awesome glissando, by the way, at the end of the first round going down. That's just one of the coolest things in this riff. Anyway, now to the bit where I, I messed up previously. So I just didn't know. Playing this mostly from memory, I always played it like this. piece again, I was definitely missing some important bits in this riff. Let's have a listen. First thing and second thing. Hmm. You clearly hear all these ornamental embellishments going on, right? With that typical Middle Eastern vibe. But what's going on exactly? Let's slow it down. So that sounds so cool, very Middle Eastern, and I've heard the following statement on this, by the way. One may almost say that not a single note is left unornamented. They are so common that they are not indicated by special signs in the notation, but are understood by the player. Understood by the player, right? Hmm. Sorry, I, I clearly messed up over there. So there's four of these embellishments in total. Number one, two, and four are exactly the same rhythm-wise, but the third one is kind of different and it's, it's great. So the first one is like this. So the first hammer on, that was the one I missed. So on the second note, we do a quick hammer on from fret seven to eight and pull off again immediately back down to seven. Now just the same. The third thing is different. The third one goes like this. So now the little hammer on, the little embellishment is later in the bar on the third beat. So not like this, but and the fourth one is the same as the first two again. Followed by the F, the G sharp, and the E again. So in total, this bit goes like this. Alternate pickings go like this. But I guess this was just half speed, so pray with me. Let's do it. Can you do the claps again? All right. One, two, three, four. And 
now it's just a guitar by itself. Three, four. So, and if you wondered if that second variation in there was an accident or something, definitely not. Because later when he plays the same thing two octaves higher, he does exactly the same variation. So it's actually a very well thought out piece. So after that he just plays the entire segment again on the high E string. So Dick Dale, a Fender Strat pioneer by the way, got in close contact with Leo Fender in California at the time he was developing the first Stratocaster. He sort of tested the first models, like run them through their paces and boy how he did that was putting 16 gauge strings on there, with the heaviest being 60 I guess. So E that's the very one. Thick tone to the max, and that really explains why that sounds so tight. Also, he's a left hander playing a right handed model just upside down, so for him, the higher strings are at the top and vice versa. It's weird, but it's very cool. Also, we must notice how he jumps into that little high bit. It's one of the most epic, sli woo, epic slides in all of guitar history, if you ask me. So the trick to getting that slide right is to play two strings instead of one sliding down, the high E and the B. So now we just play the same riff, but now on the first string. You got the claps, right? From this part out there is the trumpet solo, and this is actually the spot where we sort of diverge from that double harmonic major. With a chromatic line up, it's pretty cool. But now we turn it into the Andalusian cadence in the key of A minor, sort of, with the chords A minor, G major, F. major. But the trumpet solo is still playing in a double harmonic line, so it's it's really awesome. So I think so far we made the copyright trolls angry enough, it's fine for now. So this video will be flagged and will be claimed anyway, it's out of my hands. So it would be awesome for everyone watching to show some support by just leaving a gentle thumbs up for this video. And of course I'd love to hear your thoughts on this amazing riff as well. Did I miss something? Are there some more iconic riffs we need to talk about? Please let me know in the comment section, of course, if you want to learn more from me. You might want to consider checking out my guitar courses. Learn, practice, play for beginner guitarists, next level playing for intermediate electric guitarists, and of course, acoustic adventure for everyone that's just as enthusiastic about acoustic guitar as me. Have a lovely day, and I hope to see you in the next video. Cheers.